All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. Amy and Nick here be doing our preview and prediction for the Lending Tree Bowl matchup between two former conference foes, USM and Rice. Saturday, December 17th is the date of this one, 5.45 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN, Hancock-Whitney Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. And this series history tied 6-6, Rice winning the last two meetings. Looking at this Owl offense, Nick, I think they've done much better than they have in recent memory you know they have some pretty interesting production tj mcmahon 2100 yards 18 touchdowns does have a whopping 14 interceptions but he's gotten some good you know leadership out of his pass catchers luke mccaffrey bradley rosner these guys have been pretty productive of course luke mccaffrey a few different destinations in his career with 51 grabs for 656 yards and six scores rosner a little bit better 834 and 41 grabs with nine touchdowns and even isaiah esdale 461 yards on 39 grabs so this race offense, they finally started to get the ball moving this year. The running game has not been great. You know, Cam Montgomery, 498 yards, has yet to find the end zone. And, you know, him and Juma Ottaviano, 391 yards, one score for him. You know, 143 yards per contest, you know, pretty respectable number for this Rice offense. I think that they've come a long way from recent memory, Nick. You know, what is your assessment of the Owls is, you know, they're in a bowl game for the first time in a long time. This Rice offense is close to breaking through. You know, this is not a bad offensive unit. They certainly do have some talent here. You know, the quarterback play is not bad. You know, he, you know, McMahon is not a bad quarterback. 2,000 yards passing, 60% completion percentage. Just the 14 interceptions is a brutal mark. I know a lot of those came against USC, but still, it is a brutal mark to see. The def- the offense really, you know, it's not bad on the ground, certainly. You know, the point, you know, the yards per game total is not terrible. 143 yards on the ground rushing. It's not terrible. 370 total yards of offense and 25 points per game. Not a terrible number for this Rice team. This is a big opportunity for a team that's five and seven. They, they sneak into a bowl game. Excited to see them in this bowl game. I like Montgomery as a back. You know, he has no scores yet on the season, but nearly 500 yards rushing. Solid production out of him. Octavio as well. Not a bad back. You know, six yards per carry in the score for him. I do like this pass catching core. This is a solid wide receiving core. There is some production here. You know, of course. The college football based on his way here, Luke McCaffrey, 656 yards receiving, 12.9 yards per catch, six scores for him. Bradley Rosner as well. He's got nearly 900 yards receiving, 20 yards per catch in the nine scores. Not a bad offense here. They put up some points when necessary. I do like the talent they have. You know, the offense line is poor, but there are some potential bright spots there. This is an interesting offense, and it's going to be weird. It'd be kind of cool to see how they can play in this bowl game. First bowl game in a while for Rice. They want to put on a good showing. Looking at the Southern Miss offense, one point per game less, about 40 yards less as well compared to the Owls offense. But I would say... They have the best player on offense in this game, and Frank Gore Jr. Hard fought, 1,053 yards and seven touchdowns. Obviously, the son of a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he's a really good back. Nick, five yards per carry. You know, I do think that you know he gets way too much carries though. You know, the guy behind him, John Ari Dean. You know, he only played nine games this year, 179 yards. They don't dish it out one bit. 17 attempts per contest for him. Uh, no, that's half of what the team does per contest. Nobody else really touches the football quarterback has been a big issue this year Trey Lowe looks like he's gonna get the star 53 percent completion rate three touchdowns two picks 795 yards um you know this is just not a good football team you know quarterback would be a big issue for them coming into the year and it still has been three different guys got the nod uh Jason Brownlee one of their you know impact performers at pass catcher 52 grabs 819 yards and seven touchdowns Tia Quillen Mims 23 grabs 361 yards for him um, this is a team that's not very deep at running back or at pass catcher. Uh, Mims, you know, he hasn't had a reception in the last two games, despite being the second leading team. You know, he's from Alabama, so kind of a home game for him. Um, you know, this offensive line's also been pretty bad. 113th in FBS and sacks allowed. Uh, you know, we just talked about the Rice offense. Had plenty of good things to say about them. And I do think Frank Gore and Jason Brownlee are two bright spots for USM. Um, I'm just not really sure what to expect from them, Nick, because the quarterback play has been awful. Lanes for Frank Gore Jr. have not always been there, but you know him being a you know a hard runner, one of the highest graded backs in college football. I think that's certainly going to give him an edge. Crazy for him this year: 207 attempts on the season, thousand yards rushing, 5.1 yards per carry, seven scores. He is their entire offense, right? This guy is what the offense runs through. They hand the ball into a ton. If you can stop Frank Gore Jr., they're going to have a bad day. Southern Miss is going to struggle. You know, Brownlee's not a bad wide receiver at all. Certainly, you know, over 800 yards receiving and seven scores for him. But like you said, Mims hasn't had a catch in the last few games, and he's still second on the team in receptions. The depth is just not there. You know, there really isn't any talent deep in this team, and they seem to be struggling to find anyone who can kind of make a play. Jacarius Costin, as well as the third leading wide receiver, he only has 27 grabs for 350 yards and four scores. Certainly does come down to the quarterback play. Zach Wickle was a bat, was not a great quarterback, and Trey Lowe is certainly not that 
much better. He was 53% completion percentage, three score, three touchdowns, and two interceptions, plus he's taken 13 sacks. This O-line's not great for Southern Miss. They're not far behind Rice in terms of points per game and yards per game, but these two offenses are just nothing really to jump off the paper at. And that's what you see in some of these lesser bowl games. It's interesting to kind of see who's going to get the edge on the day. And when you have a guy like Frank Gore as your back, it certainly leans the way that Southern Miss could have a better day on offense because he just is a power back. He's going to run people over. Well, got the Rice defense. You know, things certainly fall off a good bit when you get here. 34 points per contest were allowed. You know, the former Rutgers linebacker on Chris Conti's come over and had a pretty good impact. 66 tackles, four tackle for loss. Josh Piercy off the edge, five and a half sacks, eight TFL. I think Trey Schumann's a pretty good edge rusher for them as well. Uh, this is a team that they don't exactly give up a lot of yards. They certainly give up a lot of points. Of course, that could be one of the back draws of having an offense that has, you know, plenty of consistency issues. Gabe Taylor, I think he's also having a heck of a season as a coverage corner. 91st ranked run defense here for the Owls, Nick, and that phrase from Frank Gore, of course, offensive line has not been great at, you know, creating holes for him. But sometimes individual talent in the backfield is going to reign supreme against some of these poor run defenses. You know, what are you kind of expecting in this game here? Again, a team that gives up a good bit of yards per game on the ground, not much through the air. Of course, they don't have much of a task there. So I think they might look to load up the box a good bit here. They certainly should load up the box, and that's the best you know sort of strategy this team has against this Southern Miss offense that is going to live and die by the running game. Chris Conti coming over from Rutgers has been a solid linebacker, 69 total tackles plus a sack for him. Brian Myron Morrison as well, 67 total tackles for him at linebacker, one and a half sacks for him. Josh Piercy, 43 total tackles, five and a half sacks for him. He leads the way in the sacks for the teams. You know Trey Schumann coming off the edge. I like him at it on the edge. You know four sacks, 21 total tackles for him. This is a good defense against you know passing defense but they're not that great against the run like you said they give up a certain they give up a you know a decent amount of yards on the ground allowed 168 166.8 yards per game allowed on the ground they do give up a ton of points 33.8 points per game if they can find a way to stop frank Gore jr and kind of stonewall him a little bit they can have success in this bowl game because i think the passing is gonna be a struggle for southern miss but they're gonna have to load the box put pressure early on and kind of plug up those running lanes they won't have any success in this bowl game well, we got the Southern Miss defense. You know, we finally have our first real big edge, I would say. This defense uh, for the Eagles has been great. 23 and a half points per game, under 370 yards per contest, uh, 39 sacks, 102 tackles for loss. Two of the top marks in the nation, Dominic Kewan, has been great. 10 TFL, nine of those being sacks. Josh Ratliff, Williams, they've been great against the run for this football team. Um, I think that they have playmakers, in, you know, all three levels of the football team. You know, Central Latham, second on the team with 80 tackles. Malik Short's having a great year, 91 stops, six plays on the ball. And then safety Jay Stanley, he's elite. He's been having a phenomenal all-conference type season. 56 tackles, six pass breakups, also a handful of fumbles for him. Uh, you know, I think this defensive line is incredibly active, Nick, and I think that's one edge that we finally found that is clear as day. I think Rice will certainly struggle with against a very talented defense that's got a lot of veterans that really had a resurgent year this season. This is a talented defense for Southern Miss, and they really have shown that so far this season. The numbers are good. 23.5 points allowed per game, 139.4 yards allowed on the ground per game. I like the way this defense has progressed throughout the season. Malachi Shorts at you know defensive back, 92 total tackles for him, leads the way. Santrell Latham, 80 tackles, three and a half sacks, four pass breakups. Great seasons for him. Shorts also has three interceptions. Not a bad season for him. I love the production on the defensive line. You know, they're getting a lot of sacks, nine sacks from Kuan, you know, and then be Bevins as well has four and a half sacks, 32 total tackles for him. Kristen Booth as well got a hat, one and a half sacks, 34 tackles on the line. This is a great defensive line. They get after the quarterback. I love the edge rushing presence here. And that really is the key, like you said, to this game. Can they get after the Rice quarterback and the Rice running backs, you know, kind of make them uncomfortable and force them to be quick out of the pocket? That's going to be the key to success for Southern Miss. They certainly have the chance to do that. Now looking at final thoughts. And the prediction of this game, keys to the contest for Rice. I think utilize some of these protective pass catchers. You got Bradley Rosner, Luke McCaffrey. They've both been really good for them this season. And I think for USM, don't give up those big plays, you know, to those receivers. And I think protect the football. You do not want to give an offense that struggles, uh, you know, with a defense that's not that great, some extra possessions. Um, I have Southern Miss winning this one. I think the defense is a clear edge for them. 24-14, I think it's a very respectable score. Uh, I think Frank Gore is going to have a you know pretty solid day on the ground, 150 plus yards, maybe find the end zone a time or two. You know, Rice winning this one, which you know I can totally understand, especially if it's a lower lower scoring game like you've predicted. I think this will be a bit of a home game for Southern Miss though, and um, you know again I think they're going to have a bit of an edge with their offense against the Rice defense, and I think the Rice offense is going to struggle big time. But bowl mania, anything can happen, and you're going to take the Owls here to cover and win outright. 
I'm taking Rice to win outright simply because, like you said, it's Bull Mania. Anything can happen. I think they have the best potential to win this game out of these like early slate kind of random matchups. I think their offense is going to be able to produce something because if they can get big plays early on, kind of gut punch this, this Southern Miss defense, I think that will be a big key to success. I also have a feeling that Southern Miss might struggle on offense if this Rice defense can plug the hole early on prevent Frank Gore from picking up huge gains on the ground. It'll be a low scoring contest. I think Rice will have also has a lot of, you know, kind of mojo going into this. I know they backdoor their way into this with three straight losses, but they haven't been to a bowl game in a very long time. It's exciting for the alumni, exciting for the fans. It's a real opportunity to pick up a big bowl win for them, get another trophy in the cabin. And I think Rice has the chance here to win this. I think Rice is close. I think they're going to win this bowl game. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Excited to see them in the Lending Tree Bowl. Bit of a random matchup between two former conference foes. Kind of excited to see how it all falls out. Yeah, I think this game, it's not attractive one bit on paper. Nothing about this matchup is attractive, but I think that this might be a pretty good way to close out the night. As always, Nick, I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, certainly not an attractive matchup, but Rice is close. This one should be fun, and I'm excited to watch this one. That's me for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.